welcome back in our interview segment. Linda Obi is an influential trailblazer and has made a significant impact in technology, blockchain, and health sectors through transformative leadership. As a CEO of Afri Health, she championed innovative healthcare solutions, revitalizing the industry and improving uh, lives across Africa. She joins me now on today's discussion. Thanks for joining me, Linda. Good morning to you. Hi, good morning. Thanks for having me on the show. It is indeed uh, my pleasure. So, Linda, let's talk about um, health tech. It seems to be uh, gradually becoming like a norm right now in the nation's healthcare uh, sector. If we talk about penetration in Nigeria, how far would you say that we have come so far? So I would say that when we speak about health tech, we are talking about the broad, you know, it's broader than, you know, encompassing it in that um, vocabulary, which is health tech. In health tech, we have telemedicine, we have information health systems, we have mHealth, we have e-pharmacy, we have a lot of it. And prior to this time, we know that when we talk about health issues, people are rather reactive to it as opposed to being proactive. But one thing that the internet has done is that it, I mean, technology continues to be an enabler. And as of today, Global internet penetration stands at 50-60% in Nigeria. Let me come down to Nigeria. Internet adoption and penetration is at 50%, right? And this is continuing to enable technology to solve pain points in critical sectors, and health happens to be one of it. Now, how is technology solving this issue? We have areas of telemedicine, like I've said, areas of, you know, storing your emergency record, your, your um, health record on, you know, um, a digital platform, you have mHealth, which is the mobile health applications, we have e-pharmacies, and then we have AI and machine learning, which is coming to just, you know, disrupt the space. So as far as penetration goes, you know, to answer to your question, I say, I say that, I mean, we'll continue to see innovations like this on the rise. Um, we'll continue to see solutions like ours can need to come up to solve critical pain points in the healthcare space. All right. Uh, it became very, very popular, as it were, in Nigeria during the, the COVID-19, during the pandemic, and a whole lot of people actually uh, began to embrace it uh, so much. Uh, let's look at one of the value chain of the supply, the supply side that you talked about, which is uh, e-pharmacy. Uh, lots of people are seemingly actually using that, um, uh, that um, aspect of uh, health tech and uh, they make demands and uh, they get um, their drugs, they get their pharmaceuticals online. But so far, would you really say that uh, we have been able to reach the demands of Nigerians uh, through uh, e-pharmacy? So I would say that for e-pharmacy as a specific vertical, mm. it is also with a lot of challenges, right? Challenges around regulation, because at the end of the day, you need to instill some kind of controls that sanitizes the space. And what we are doing um, around regulation, I'm, I'm sure you must have heard of our Africa Plus, and the oh. vertical of Africa Plus is the e-pharmacy side, where you have, um, it's like a marketplace where pharmacies are allowed to onboard, um, upload their drugs, you know, their inventory, and then they this is accessible to people real time. And, you know, with platforms like this comes regulation. So one thing we have been able to do, and one thing I see that the space is um, thriving at is complying and, you know, just complying with the regulations around this value chain and this vertical, which is, you know, the e-pharmacy. Mm -hmm. As of today, um, we, you cannot talk about e-pharmacy without actually talking about e-commerce. And e-commerce as a vertical has its challenges. Now talk about a niche space as e-pharmacy. What we've continued to see is that, you know, technology would bridge the gap. Um, in some rural communities, um, what we try to do again at um, Africa and Rigor Plus would be that we are channeling, you know, our strategies towards on, on, on the South communities. Oh. So what you see is that for some communities, you have to travel very far before oh. you get that one accredited pharmacist. What are we doing and what are we doing with technology? What we are doing is leveraging technology, right? So join hands with the regulators, liaise with pharmaceutical outlets, accredited, making sure that we have on our platform pharmacies that you can come into shop only wholesome products, right? Oh. Wholesome products would be that you are not at the risk of shopping contraband or you're not at the risk of shopping counterfeited goods. As long as that pharmacy is verified, you find that person in our platform. So what we are trying to do and what we continue to, you know, evangelize within the ecosystem is sit within the regions of compliance, um, 
I don't think we alone can solve the problems oh. that continue to you know, persist in the healthcare value chain, right? right. When you talk about um, the pharmaceutical side of things, which is e-pharmacies, when you talk about M-Health, when you talk about telemedicine, right. Afri Health alone cannot solve these problems. So what are we trying to do? We are going to collaborate with private stakeholders. We are going to collaborate with public stakeholders to ensure that we scale. Because the acceptance that we can need to find, the acceptance that we can need to see across the vertical right. is just the pointer to the stats that continue to validate the pain points. Let me paint a green picture for you. All right. As of today, we have one patient to 2,753 doctors pan Nigeria. Let me come down to Lagos. We have one patient to 15,000 doctors. We have just 40,000 clinics or health centers across Nigeria. That is one patient, one, um, um, one hospital to over 5,000 patients. Oh. That is what the landscape looks like today. And technology would be that enabler, would be that balancer that we are looking to scale um, health access to premium health across Nigeria and by implication Africa. All right, let's still talk about uh, the supply uh, side issues, right? There are some challenges inherent in health tech. I, I had the opportunity to attend um, uh, a CME uh, sometime last year. Uh, they had uh, several medical practitioners in attendance. And one of the things that was resounding um, amongst all of them there was the issue of uh, health tech funding, uh, specifically for uh, laboratory equipment and, of course, some um, hospitals uh, equipment. They talked about the issue of venture capital and uh, how expensive it is. And, you, and uh, there's an issue of um, getting back money and all of that because most of Nigerians, they actually pay uh, for these uh, 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 health care needs uh, tr from their pockets. And at, at the end of the day, so they cannot really afford uh, most of uh, these um, technologies as it were. So can you just uh, throw more light on that as the issue of our health uh, tech funding? So I think the issue of funding, so I'm having a bit of a glitch, so I'll put on my video shortly. I think the issue of funding is um, not just, it doesn't, that issue is not peculiar to healthcare, oh. right? That issue is not peculiar to healthcare at all. It goes across different verticals, it goes across finance, it goes across agriculture, and I also want to think about, talk about the landscape that we're currently um, playing, which is Africa. Funding to Africa, we saw a lot of it in 2021, um, but it, it, it kind of slowed down, right, in 2022 and 2023. And all verticals, all spaces are hit by it. This is not a, 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 um, a health technology or healthcare thing. Oh. What I feel that can be done, right, to continue to attract this kind of investment would be building meaningful products that solves real life issues, right? And that is why we continue to advocate for access to premium healthcare because that is a fundamental that is, you know, a, I, I think it's a fundamental human right across the globe. It's a fundamental human right to everyone, right? Now, if we continue to build real life issues, real life um, problems, solutions that are tackling real life problems that are actually speaking to, now let's come down to the healthcare sector oh. that is actually speaking to um, what's called diagnosis, that is speaking to emergency records, that is speaking okay. to um, what's called um, access to doctors real time without having to travel um, all the way, you know, um, to, to, a, to a hospital without having to travel all the way to a pharmacy. Now, those are real life issues that actually requires a lot of funding because the infrastructural build out, the whole technology build out costs a lot. So if I am to speak, I would say that we would need a lot of, a lot of funding around these verticals. All right, uh, still on um, some of these um, challenges, I, I still want you to uh, walk me through it uh, uh, so I can understand clearly in terms of uh, uh, medication distribution. Uh, what sort of um, challenge uh, do um, health um, tech uh, providers have in that particular line? So healthcare providers do not have a problem. Actually, the people with this with this pain points that we are actually trying to solve would be the manufacturers who are actually, you know, manufacturing pharmaceutical products oh. and importers, you know, who are actually importing pharmaceutical pro pro products. What we've come to find as a problem would be problems around serialization, problems okay. around counterfeit uh, medication, oh. problems around diverting where, you know, it's a 
it's as though you have, you know, a particular pro, um, um, product concentrated in a particular region. What have we done to tackle this problem? We have what is called Rigor Plus for manufacturers. And what we essentially do would be to solve these problems for manufacturers and importers, right? We have a whole serialization line that is very state of art, you know, tailored to purpose and helps you combat the issues of bulk stuffing, bulk stuffing oh. helps you, com, com, uh, you know, confront the issues of location recall. You need to actually batch recall a certain product. Help you primarily combat the issues around drug counterfeiting. Okay. It is a no-brainer, right? When we talk about the significant losses that is accredited to manufacturers with regards to counterfeit products, the significant the, the significant losses that is accredited to importers with regards to not able to track their products and uh -huh. not able to vouch for the integrity of their products, right? Afri Health is bridging all of that with its solution rigor plus for, for manufacturers, right. which is tailored to solve serialization problems, drug counterfeiting, bulk stuffing, location recall, location geofencing, name it, right? We can customize a solution that works for every manufacturer. All right. All right, Linda, fine. We've talked about some of the challenges and some of the threats uh, that we have to the health um, tech sector. But I know that it has actually come to stay, and I believe there are lots of opportunities and um, prospects. Uh, can you tell us uh, where you see us, that's Nigeria, as a country in the next five years in terms of um, uh, service uh, uh, solutions, um, pro providing solutions, that is, in terms of um, health um, tech? Yeah, like I said at the very initial of this interview, right, when as Africans and growing up in Nigeria, I would understand that it's only when you have malaria that you begin to treat it. There is nothing like preventive measures. But as we continue to see the adoption of internet, the internet, and as we continue to see digital natives now, people who are born into this technology, would continue to see a rise and uptake in telemedicine, um, would see an uptake in health information system, M Health, like I said, e pharmacies, and AI machine learning. And of course, you know what, we, we can all see see what um, the technology, which we call blockchain, we can see the re revolution and the, um, the, the disruption that is bringing um, to the sector. In the next five years, what I would see would be like, would, would have a lot of internet of things around the health um, um, care space. That is a vertical of technology that is going to scale. Big data analytics is going to be a thing. Mm. Why? Because we are already collating data anyway. Mm. So when you're looking at, um, what's it called? You're looking at making a decision when it comes to a demography, say you are looking at a particular demography, we uh -huh. have, you know, what we, we are now putting together, which is speak to big data analytics. All the right. VR and AR thing is going to be a thing in, in the coming five years. I'm sure that would have consultations in the metaverse. Drone deliveries and the likes are also going to be a thing. So I do think that, you know, um, if I'm to if I'm to come down to layman's term, the future is really bright All right. um, with regards to health technology. All right, thank you so much, uh, Linda. Obi. We have been speaking with her. She is an influential trailblazer, and of course, she is with Afritech, and she has uh, given a whole wonderful insight to the prospect of um, health tech in Nigeria. I do appreciate your time, Linda. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. Yeah, have our pleasure.